Hi, Gary Stearman. It's Monday, the 12th of March. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. And Bob Ulrich is in studio with me once again today. And, and we wanted uh, one more time to mention the upcoming Prophecy Summit at Branson 2012. That's July 13th through 15th at the Radisson Hotel in Branson, Missouri. And we have a lot of speakers. Bob, let me just read a few names here. Tom Horn, Chuck Missler, Grant Jeffrey, L.A. Marzulli, Avi Lipkin, uh, Joseph Farah, Noah Hutchings, Larry Spargamino, Bill Federer, Doug Woodward, Doc Marquise, the Gilberts, Derek and Sharon Gilbert. They were such a hit last year. David Brennan, Ray Gano, Russ Dizdar, the names go on, and I didn't even mention them all, Bob. I left out a couple. Uh, Steve Bauer, who wrote The Math of Christ, and his wife, Linda. Yeah. Uh, Steve Russell, the man who helped capture Saddam Hussein, the commander of the, the unit that caught Saddam. Uh, and we have a new name that we didn't announce previously. Jonathan Kahn, who wrote the new off-the-charts best-selling blockbuster book, The Harbinger. Yes. has agreed to come to the conference. In fact, Jonathan is going to be on the set of Prophecy in the News here in just a couple of weeks, and that's something to look forward to in the future. Uh, and we're going, to, we're going to do a series of programs with him on his book. But Jonathan is going to be in Branson with us as one of the featured speakers. And he, by the way, he's a great speaker. Uh, I've heard him speak, and his message is what a prophetic blockbuster. It's the top of the charts everywhere. By the way, we didn't mention Jerome Corsi. Uh, we should mention him because anyone who's a WorldNet Daily fan knows about Jerome Corsi. Anyone who uh, has followed the uh, the uh, quote unquote birth certificate uh, <laughs> dilemma it knows about Jerome Corsi. He's going to be speaking too. Gary, I'm I'm a little afraid to check my email every morning because every day I wake up and there's somebody else contacting me saying, oh, "I told you I couldn't come before, but now I can come. Is there still room for me?" And I'm si sitting here shuffling blocks around the table trying to figure out how I'm going to get all of these wonderful people into an auditorium to speak. And, and let me just say that virtually all of these people are headliners at other prophecy conferences. Now, I'm going to be there too. And I'm going to be speaking on a subject near and dear to my heart. And, and it is, and you, you don't say ho-hum when I say it's the rapture of the church. But Bob, I have been studying the rapture now for decades. And I believe I have a, a, a new and very exciting way of looking at the rapture of the church. And I'm going to be making that presentation. By the way, speaking of the rapture of the church, have you noticed that it has come up now as the top conversational item within Christendom these days? Well, it has. Not just the positive view of the rapture, but Bob, we get the negative view too. There's, there's a lot of debate and discussion about the rapture of the church these days. Well, I'm sitting here, Gary, and I'm just hoping we have room at the conference for you to speak. <laughs> I will gladly defer to some of the great names, Bob, yeah. believe me. You have already graciously offered to do that, and of course I say that tongue-in-cheek. You know, your research and your writing on the website about the pre-tribulation rapture yeah. is unlike anything I think people have ever read anywhere. Uh, you know, two weeks ago, my father passed away, and on my way back to New Jersey, uh, or, or when I came into the office before I left for my trip back, there was a book on my desk. It's written by a Greek professor at uh, Tyndale Seminary by the name of David Olander, and I just got to tell you, I can't, can you think of a better book title? The Greatness of the Rapture, mm -hmm. The Pre-Day of the Lord rapture <clears throat> yes well indeed. i think this was put on my desk by the lord for my trip because i read this on the way back i read this on the way there read this on the way back from the funeral and i gotta tell you it just just blessed my socks off uh he has a way with words i mean this is a brilliant writer i hesitate to call this the definitive work on the rapture of the church but i've got to tell you when you read this you are going to be blessed this is a hard hitting expose that just hits people right between the eyes and, and highlights the things that you and I have talked about here for months, you and <coughs> JR have talked about for 25 years, things about the rapture, and I know there are people watching today who uh, they are just not quite sure. Well, I'd like to believe yeah. in the rapture, Gary, but uh, I think we're probably going to go through some tribulation. Well, Bob, what I always say to people about the rapture of the church, you don't believe the rapture of the church? Well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in the resurrection of the church? 
and people, well, of course, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you are a believer by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to be resurrected into a glorified body. That's the promise of Scripture. Well, if you're going to be resurrected, you're also going to be raptured because the two are <laughs> indistinguishable. The resurrection yes, they are. is the rapture. And Paul, in discussing it, he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 42, so also is the resurrection of the dead, sown in incorruption, raised in incorruption, sown in corruption. That's where we are right now, raised in incorruption. Behold, he says a few verses later, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. The twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Well, that's the resurrection, Bob, but it's also the rapture. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> you know, we're not going to stop talking about this. We have some people who I'm sure are going to comment after the program today that we're yeah. delusional, that we're following the teachings of C.I. Schofield, and they're going to bring up some mystery vision, Margaret McDonald, and this is all old yesterday's news. There's not right. a shred of truth to it. Uh, you can believe that if you want, but if you're disappointed with us talking about the rapture, let me just say you probably need to find another program to watch because this is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the major doctrines of the church. It's a major doctrine mm -hmm. at Prophecy in the News. We're not going to stop talking about it. This is our blessed hope, now, isn't it? What follows is a first. I'm going to contradict, Bob, because I don't <laughs> want you to watch another program. I want watch us <laughs> as we discuss uh, these things because it's very, very important. It's called the blessed hope. The hope of the world is the resurrection into newness of life. That's the hope. That's right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, and you know the rest of that, don't everybody knows that verse. It's I think even non-Christians know. Everlasting life. You got it, Bob. Everlasting I'm waiting life. for you to finish. And who can, who can explain that or wrap their arms around that? And I want to read yeah. something that David <clears throat> Olander says in this book because, you know, to me, this kind of really, really just hit me hard when I read it. And I, and I have to say, I never really thought about it this way for the first time. Now that I've lost my dad, you know, I have a reason to keep looking up now more than ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on Resurrection Day, you know, dad is going to get his new body. And, you know, and we're all going to be together. And, and David's a great, great reunion in the sky. And David says, nevertheless, to imagine all these believers having been regenerated and placed into his body for almost 2,000 years, the numbers would be staggering. And, of course, the 2,000 years is the church age. The fact is that all these believers from all these centuries, from all over the world, are part of the same body. All these believers, all together, make up his entire body. While they will all be with him in eternity forever, they all meet him for the first time to be with him forever, only in the rapture. The rapture so defines the conclusion of the church that when Paul penned Romans 11.25, would he himself have imagined the extent and magnitude of the rapture? There could be no way Paul would have fully understood the time involved in building <clears throat> the body of Christ over the last 2,000 years. There will be a fullness of the Gentiles that has come in, and that will fully complete the number of those chosen to be in the body. So we're all going to be together. Christ is going to have his bride together all at one time, all in the same place, when we're gathered to meet the Lord in the air. It's beyond imagining. <laughs> But it's certainly not beyond believing. We believe it because it's written in the Word, and that's a very dependable Word. Uh, the name of the book is The Greatness of the Rapture. David Olander is the author, and Bob, we're going to have it on the website. Yeah, it'll be on the website later today. It's it's twenty one ninety five. It's just a, a magnificent read. There's one more thing I want to read out of this because the connection here is something that I know we really value and hold strong. I read a blog this morning from a guy who just totally denounced the subject of Zionism. And it, hateful, wicked, vicious, ripped C.I. Schofield, ripped the Schofield Bible, ripped dispensationalists. And his, his uh, conclusion was Israel of the Old Testament is certainly not the Israel of today. That they're not even the same nation. That there's no promises to the Israel of today. And we feel a little bit differently. We certainly do. And, and what David said here is clear. He says there remains... On the, nation is, uh, on the nation of Israel, a hardness of heart and spirit 
until the full number of the Gentiles come into the church. Once the last Gentile comes into the church, the church will be raptured, and the hardness that is upon Israel as a nation today will be removed. Mm -hmm. God will then go back to dealing with them very directly with his covenant people Israel, the Jewish people. This does not mean he's not been working with them over the past 2,000 years, for he has. He's protected, guided, and preserved this nation, nation just as he promised. Amen. Well, it's all about the plan of God and Bible prophecy, and that's what we study and deliver to you right here on Prophecy in the News. This is what we've been doing it now uh, since J.R. started this in 1979. Uh, we have a long track record. People know what we believe. Uh, we want to promote the blessed hope for you, to you directly. We don't want you to be discouraged in uncertain times. And by the way, Bob, times are uncertain. The economy, gas prices, politics, uh, global peace, European uh, financial breakdown. You could get very frightened if you wanted to think about these things. Well, there's a lot of Christians who are frightened about those things, and, and the yeah. Lord has them all in control, but just imagine how the rest of the world feels oh, and the yeah. confusion they feel. If you're confused about the rapture, I'm telling you, this is a book that you're going to want to read. I mean, it, it's, it just cleared up so many things for me in so many different ways. Even reading through First and Second Thessalonians. I mean, this is yeah. a Greek scholar who wrote this book, but yet it's written in a way the average person can understand and follow. Tremendous footnotes. Uh, I just read it. It just gave me such a clear assurance and an understanding that one day the trumpet's going to sound and we are going to meet the Lord in the air. I'll meet my dad again. Amen. Well, Gary Stearman, and of course, Jesus is coming soon, so keep looking up.